So we've been studying the DFT, the discrete Fourier transform, and the DFT lets us examine the frequency content of a non-periodic discrete time signal. What we're going to turn our attention to now is something called the FFT, the Fast Fourier Transform. The Fast Fourier Transform is just a specific way of computing the DFT. This is actually sometimes actually called the cooley tukey algorithm based on the uh, inventors back in 1965 that developed this algorithm. But the FFT is nothing more than just a specific and very efficient way of computing the DFT. The way it works is it takes advantage of the symmetry in the DFT computations. And by taking advantage of the symmetry, it's able to cut down on the number of operations it needs to perform. And in fact, it can cut down the number of operations from kind of like a brute force way that I would probably go about implementing a DFT, which requires n squared operations, it can reduce that down to n log n. Now, that's actually quite a significant saving in terms of number of computations. Typically, the algorithm works best when n, the length of the signal you're working with, is a power of 2. So ideally, you're working with a signal that has 8 samples, or 16, 32, 64, something like that. But in general, kind of more generally, what you want is to work with signals that has small prime factors. So maybe its length is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. That would be something that would be broken down very easily by the FFT. Or maybe its factors are 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 5. That would be a signal whose length has small composite factors uh, or small prime factors. You wouldn't want to work with a signal that was very long and itself was a prime number. Because what we'll see is the way that the FFT algorithm works, it basically decomposes the signal down into different pieces, and the different pieces are represented as the factors of the signal. The smaller the factors the length of the signal has, the more pieces you can break it down into, and more efficient the operation or the FFT runs. This is actually what MATLAB uses and just about everybody uses to do the DFT um, to the point where FFT is basically synonymous with taking the Fourier transform of a signal on a computer or a DSP chip. FFT is kind of the standard way to perform this type of computation. But just keep in mind the FFT itself is really just a specific algorithm and what it's really doing is computing the DFT. This figure plots operations versus log n and explains why being able to reduce the number of operations from n squared down to n log n is so significant. The blue line here is a plot of n squared and the red line here is a plot of n log n. And it's plotted on kind of a, a log scale. So the number of operations right here versus the length of n. So again, this is a log scale here as well. The numbers here represent the order of the signal. So 6 would represent you know, a million samples. To the fourth would represent 10 to 10,000 samples. So as we're moving along the x-axis here, the length of the signal is getting very, very large. And for any given point here on the x-axis, the y-axis tells us how many operations are required to do the computation. So we see down here for small values of n, so these would represent very short signals. When I'm dealing with short signals that are you know, only log, log n is equal to 2, so these are signals of length you know, around 100 samples or so, the difference in number of operations between the DFT and the FFT is not real significant. There's a little gap here. The DFT is slower, the FFT takes fewer operations, but the gap isn't that large. However, by the time we get out to log n is equal to 6, so these are signals that have length a million, the difference between the number of operations required for the DFT and the number of operations required for the FFT is very significant. The FFT at this point is taking, I don't know, around 10 to the 7 operations, whereas the DFT is taking 10 to the 12 is five orders of magnitude difference in the number of operations. And as you go further out in signal length, that gap just continues to widen to where out here the FFT takes 10 to the 10 operations and now we're up to like 10 to the 17 or so. at seven orders of magnitude more operations. 
So that is a million times 10 times 10. So that's, you know, a very large number of operations of difference. And this is why we like the FFT. The FFT, when you're dealing with long signals, scales much better and will be significantly faster than just a brute force FFT operation.